Ableton Live have come out with three excellent brand new sequences that are out with Ableton Live 12. And today we're going to be looking quite closely at one of them called SQ Sequencer. So while it has a very simple interface, it really goes very deep. So check it out. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to press spacebar. If you have a look at the clock here, it says transport. So it's basically going to do what Ableton does if you press space. Now the other thing you can do is create an internal one so you can play it whenever you want like that and then also it's generated by clicking on MIDI. So we're just going to stick to transport because that's the easiest. And the first thing you'll notice is it's 8 steps or 16 steps. If you select 16 steps, obviously it is 16 steps. You can see that it goes much longer. It will just stick to 8 steps for now. And then you've got each step you can switch on or off. So we're just going to click on reset. So further to that, if you click on the pitch option here, you can now start tweaking the pitch with your mouse or you can go in here and select the value. So let's select a value here of one and another value here of four. This one here will select two. So let's hear how that sounds like. In addition to that, you can select the direction of travel. So at the moment, it defaults to forward, but we can go backwards. Alternate, which is forwards and backwards. Snake, which is kind of a stagger from step to step. And then there's a random. So let's just go and select all of them just to hear that sound. So we're just going to bring it back to forward for now. So what you can do is you can deselect certain steps and then you can scramble them around so they just move and change the position like this. Let's just reset that for now. The other thing you have is random active steps. So it just randomly chooses the steps for you. So let's just reset them all again like that. Let's just go through some of these other selections. So the next one is octave. We can use our mouse to select the octaves. We can actually select them all by double clicking on zero, or we can put a value in for all like that. So 10, or we can do minus one, which is what I'm gonna do now. And in terms of pitch, we can just go back there and we can randomize the pitch. Keep randomizing. So for pitch, what we can also do is we can lock the pitch steps. So locking pitch step, what it does is it says here, this is the length of one. We're selecting the first one. We can also select a second one. So let's just hear what they sound like like this. We've just got the same note basically playing throughout. We can select two here, three, four and five and etc you can even control specifically for pitch the direction of travel so select random here So you've got lots of options there. We're just going to bring these back to normal and unlock. Where this can get really powerful is under velocity and length. So for example, under velocity, what we can do here is we can just use the mouse to change the velocity. If you want, you can send the velocity over to a filter or to some other effect like that. But for now, we're just going to leave this the way it is. It's got scale awareness. It will use the scale of the track. Click on the scale mode here, and we're just going to select G flat minor. The other thing we can do is shift things around. So if we want to shift all of the notes here in pitch mode. We can shift them to the right and to the right again. Just to hear that sounds. We can shift them all down a notch or up a notch. Okay, let's go now to length. What that does is it selects the length of the note. So let's just move these up with the mouse. Let's make this first one really long. Let's slow it down so you can really hear it. So if we go back to velocity, for example, we can now lock velocity to the first note like that. So it's always the same, but we can say change velocity for the 
first three steps here. So it's only, you can see it's only moving for the first three steps. So you've got a wide range of possibilities here with these options. So as you'd imagine, you'd be able to change the time division so we can slow it down a bit with eight. And we can move it really fast to 32. We can add a bit of swing, so let's just do that slowly. And we can also do triplets and dotted time values. In addition, there is a second page. So let's just go to the second page here and we can say change the time shift. So let's just hear how that sounds. Let's slow it down to eighths. So all it's doing is adding extra time to each step. And then very interesting one is one called Ratchet. So let's take a listen to Ratchet. We'll just increase one of these steps. So you can see that can be a very interesting option as well. And finally, there's a option called condition. Now, I don't often do this, but I actually have no clue to what condition does. If you guys know what condition does, please put something in the comments. There's actually not a lot of documentation on the SQ, even though it's just come out and it's a new feature. I don't see a lot of documentation on what it does, but everything else is super fun and super cool. So finally, if we select random range, all that will do is give you a limit as to the range. So for example, we can select free here. This is for ratchet. If we do some randomization, it will only randomize it between zero and three. Let's bring that back to zero. So let's try pitch, for example. Let's just randomize that so it only can be selecting first three notes. So we just go back to octave here randomize free notes. Similar with velocity. Let's just select five here. And length will select five again. Now, obviously, with the synths that you get with Ableton, you can make lots of adjustments to make the sound amazing like this. So that's it. What do you guys think of the SQ sequencer? If you like the SQ sequencer, you're going to love this.